Okay, um, we have explored a lot about the concepts of concepts and theorems of perpendicular bisectors and the midpoints of two uh, points and thinking about the equidistant points. Let's look at example four now, applying the perpendicular bisector theorem. Using it, we want to know what the value of AD is. AD is represented as the expression 3x plus 2. And since we know um, that we're given AB is equal to AD because we have a right angle here, it's a perpendicular bisector because BC and CD uh, are congruent. So yeah, this notation is a little bit weird, but that's supposed to be this, okay? Uh, the lines are congruent, BC and CD are congruent. And so because uh, AC is a perpendicular bisector, it means AB and AD has to be equidistant. They need to be at the same distance. So you can set the expression where they're equal to each other and solve for X algebraically. Because X is four, AD, you're not done. AD is three X plus two. So you're gonna plug in four into X and figure out what AD is, it's 14. Okay, value of AD is 14. So let's try number four, A and B. See if you can find the value of WY using the perpendicular bisector theorem. Using that, do you know if there are two congruent lines? Or if you do not know, if the information is not enough, you can just say it's not enough. But it's going to be enough for both A and B. So if you can solve it by yourself, come back for answers. Okay, now that you know um, algebra, it should be fairly easy um, because these two sides are equal. Z is equidistant from X and Y. And Z to uh, WZ is a perpendicular bisector by perpendicular bisector theorem. And so uh, 5N minus two should be equal to 2N plus seven. And then you can figure out N by subtracting two on, on both sides, adding two on both sides, dividing three on both sides, N is three. So what is the value of WY? 2N plus seven is WY, right? So two times three plus seven would be your answer. Six plus seven, which is 13. 13 is your answer. What about OL? OL, we're trying to figure this one out. How do you know that? Well, first, um, look at the bigger triangles. These two are 17, right? So they're congruent. We know these two are congruent and that's a perpendicular. So KN is a perpendicular bisector by perpendicular bisector theorem. So JN and NL should be the same, right? So NL is 14. And, uh, and then because OM is also a perpendicular bisector, right? Because these two sides are congruent, you know that it's a perpendicular bisector. And so it's gonna bisect your line NL. So you, using applying the perpendicular bisector theorem again, you know that O is midpoint of NL. So OL is half of NL, which is half of 14. So one over two times 14 is seven. So it is seven, okay? All right, what about example five? Finding equidistant points from the sides of an angle. Here's a real world example. An airport baggage um, inspector needs to stand equidistant from two conveyor belts. How can the inspector determine where he should stand? He wants to, he needs to stay equidistant from two conveyor belts. We got two conveyor belts right here. So um, you can use pairs of corresponding points on each on conveyor belt that are the same distance away from the vertex of the angle. And so to be equidistant from the conveyor belts, a point must have the same distance from corresponding points. 
you can draw lines perpendicular from each pair of corresponding points. So this is a little bit different. We don't have two fixed points. We have two fixed lines. We have points, multiple points, but it's a line. So you can find two sets of um, a set of two points uh, from each two lines, each lines that are going to make equal distance uh, lines to where he could stand. So draw lines perpendicular from each pair of corresponding points. Now we have corresponding points, right? And then the distance between the point and the line should be the length of the segment from point perpendicular to the line. So the point of intersection will make a point a line Q where it's uh, where all the points that are equidistant from the conveyor belts lie. Okay, so you can draw an angle bisector um, in order to find the equidistant line between the two lines instead of two points now. Okay, so if you have two lines instead of two points, you you need to find the um, angle bisector. So consider two triangles that result from drawing perpendicular segments from where the ins inspector stands. So we got two triangles over here, another triangles over here. They're very proportional. How are the triangles related? They look the same, but how are they related? They're congruent by a A X theorem because the two corresponding points will always be equidistant from uh, the point of angle, right? They are congruent by A A X theorem. Okay, so theorem 5-3, angle bisector theorem. If a point is on the bisector of an angle, then it is equidistant from the two sides of the angle. And the converse says it's the other way. Right? If a point is equidistant from the side of an angle, then it is on the angle bisector. Okay, the last example is about applying the angle bisector theorem. If you, find, if you want to find the value of KL, uh, with this expression using the angle bisector theorem, you know that those two expressions should be the same because um, it, it lies on the angle bisector. So set it equal to each other and then solve for the variable. Use, so now using the figure shown, uh, see if you can do try by yourself and come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, try number 6a. We know the information that HI and LIJ uh, would be equivalent, right? So um, the angle HGI is 25. Then we know that, um, that this, is the, this is going to be the angle bisector because uh, the distance between HI and IJ are the same and it's perpendicular. So you know it's going to form right two right triangles that have, um, that have uh, corresponding uh, sides that are equivalent, corresponding angles that are equivalent. Um, yeah, and so this must be 25 degrees. Um, uh, when you when you apply the angle bisector theorem because they're equidistant, right? Okay, uh, part B. If a uh, measure of angle HGJ, the whole thing is 57. So if this is 57 and IGJ is 28.5, and HI is 12.2, what's the value of IJ? First, let's see if 28.5 is half of 27. Does 25.5 uh, times two equal 57? Yes. So 
um, by the converse of the angle bisector theorem, we know that it's an angle bisector. So IJ would be equidistant. And so um, with uh, with HI, so IJ, IJ would be 12.12 uh, 12 as well. Okay, so it's easy to just like guess out from the graph, but know that um, for these type of questions, you need to use uh, justification to back up your reasoning. You need to use angle bisector theorem in order to justify the reasoning. Okay, that was lesson one of topic five. Concept summary, we have perpendicular bisector theorem and the converse, angle bisector theorem and the converse. So um, the whole idea is that they, uh, there, there is a point that is equidistant um, from the other two points that make a line for the perpendicular bisector theorem and the angle bisector theorem uh, is uh, the idea that we have a point that is equidistant from two lines. So it's going to bisect the angle. All right, that was lesson one, perpendicular and angle bisectors. We'll continue with the next lesson in the next video. Bye.